Buenos dias, amigos. My name is Gabriel. I speak some languages. And right now, I'm going to tackle the question, how hard is it to learn Spanish? I'm happy to make this video because although I'm Brazilian, I have some Spanish blood running in my veins. I'm going to talk about primarily learning Spanish from the standpoint of a native English speaker. If your native language is French or Italian, of course, that Spanish will be a lot easier for you. But if you are a native English speaker, Spanish will be a little bit more difficult. However, Spanish has a reputation of not being that hard to learn. But I do hear different things from different people. I have some friends here in Canada that have found Spanish challenging to learn. I have found some Canadians that have found it really easy to learn. And in my opinion, if you have the right strategies, the right resources, and the right attitude, Spanish shouldn't be a very difficult language to learn. One piece of good news, there's plenty of vocabulary that is pretty similar in English and Spanish. So you can actually just learn a lot of vocab right away. However, there are many false cognates. There are words that look the same, but have a different meaning. And some of them, if you're not aware of them, can lead to embarrassing situations. For example, the word embarazada in Spanish sounds like embarrassed or embarrassing, in English. However, it means pregnant. So you can probably see how that could lead to some confusion. Some other examples. Revolver. The verb. Sounds like revolver, but it means just to turn around. Recordar. Sounds like to record, but it means to remember. Just be careful with the false cognates. In all Romance languages, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, verb conjugations are a bit tricky. However, there are many great resources that will help you master the verb conjugations. There are many patterns that you can identify along the way that will make it easier for you to conjugate verbs. If you aren't a really big fan of doing grammar exercises, grammar drills, it's okay. By getting exposure to the language, you will be learning a lot of verb conjugations anyways. You will also develop a sense, an intuition, for figuring out the right way to conjugate a certain verb. Of course, it takes a bit of time. It does take a little bit of practice, but verb conjugations shouldn't really scare anyone. Something that I always say is that it's great for you to make short sentences in order to practice verb conjugations and also review them. The more you review the sentences that you've made with these verb conjugations, the easier you will learn them. Another thing that is a little bit tricky for native English speakers as they learn Spanish, as well as Portuguese, French, Italian, and so on, is the fact that there are two genders for nouns, masculine and feminine. And as I always say, it is really important to try to learn each noun along with its gender. So whenever you learn a new word, make sure that you learn it with the article that comes before it. Many words that end with an A are feminine, and many words that end with an O are masculine. But there are plenty of exceptions. El día the day is a masculine noun and it ends with an A. La mano, the hand, ends with an O and is feminine. It's important for you to try to learn the words along with the gender, like I mentioned before. There are two verbs to be, ser and estar. It's important for native English speakers to understand when to use each one of them. Ser is the verb to be that is a bit more permanent and estar is less permanent. Yo soy un hombre sincero. So if I am an honest man, that is a somewhat permanent condition, so I'm using ser. Yo estoy cansado. I am tired. It's not as permanent a condition, so we use estar. It sounds a bit complicated, but if you use plenty of examples of when to use each one, it shouldn't be a problem. Another interesting thing is, well, which Spanish should you learn? Which accent? I suggest this. If a lot of your friends are Mexican and you're going to be interacting with them, perhaps try to focus on developing a Mexican accent and learn Mexican expressions. If you're gonna go to Spain, spend some time there, interact with a lot of Spanish people, try to develop a Spanish accent. A lot of people say, oh yeah, I'll just focus on Latin American Spanish. However, in Latin America, there are plenty of different variations of Spanish. Some of them are a bit more difficult to understand than others. For example, Spanish from Chile, I personally find a bit difficult to understand. However, Spanish from Mexico and Colombia I find way easier to understand. Maybe it's because I had more Mexican friends here in Vancouver and 
I don't know, I find it easier to understand them. In Spain, there are also many different accents. But don't stress about this choice. Maybe try to pick a somewhat neutral Spanish, take it from there. And later, if you want to develop a specific accent, you can focus primarily on that. Spanish pronunciation is not that difficult. It takes a little while for native English speakers to develop a really clear Spanish pronunciation, but it's not something that you should really stress about. You can always constantly develop it, constantly improve it. Understanding. It can take a little while for you to develop really good understanding in Spanish. But the more listening you do, and I would recommend you do listening with text, if you have text and audio, whenever you don't understand things, you can go back to the text and vice versa. And one good thing is that there are plenty of resources out there that will help you learn Spanish. There are many, many great resources online and offline. So that's it for now, mis amigos. I hope you learned Spanish. It is an exciting language and good luck learning Spanish.